I'm Orland Park Mayor Dan McLaughlin. The following program is brought to you by the Village of Orland Park. I'm trustee Jim Dodge and this is Orland Park in focus and we've moved the show this time to the Fred Owens Village Hall and I have with uh, me today two special guests Mayor Dan McLaughlin and Congressman uh, Dan Lipinski and we're hoping in the next few moments to talk about a number of the bigger things that are going on in in Orland Park. Mayor McLaughlin let's talk about LaGrange Road which is a major project for Orland. Give everybody a sense for how the project is going, are we on time, where, 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 the, where the project is. Yeah, well, first of all, let me say this is a huge project, and we've been waiting for it for probably 20 years. We've been talking to our uh, legislators, federal and state legislators, and IDOT trying to get this on the, uh, on the docket. So we finally got it being worked on. It's about a $100 million project. The village is putting in about $15 million just to enhance the appearance, uh, make it what we think we want Orland Park to look like. But it is a little behind schedule. Uh, early in the game, the utility relocations took a little longer than uh, expected. And there's a lot of retaining walls. Wherever there's wetlands or major grade differences, there was a lot of retaining walls that took a while to, to build. So you'll start seeing a lot more uh, action now. Okay. Can you give us a sense for what motorists should expect when they're going up and down the Grange Road when the project's finished? Uh, you know, from the very beginning, we sat down, I had meetings with IDOT, and uh, talked about trying to keep the same two lanes open in each direction as much as possible. So you really didn't have a, a real uh, major change in traffic flow except it's going to be a little slower with all the barricades, but there's still going to be two lanes open most of the time. Uh, so the traffic should still move similar to what it did before, but when this is done and you have three lanes going in each direction with the extra turning lanes at the, the intersections, traffic will flow very, very well and uh, should, be a, should be a boon to the business community as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when everything is finished and the, um, the median down the center and the, uh, and the turn lanes are built. It should uh, make things much easier. The and the extra landscaping on the, on the the right-of-ways as well as the, the extra attention paid to crosswalks, trying to make LaGrange Road, as big as it'll be, pedestrian friendly by having the timed lights and, and the wide sidewalks and that kind of thing. And one thing that we, we've talked about is making sure that the residents of Orland Park can see how this evolves, so we'll make sure we continue to share well, information on that. Yeah, we've been very diligent on uh, giving notices on when there will be lane closures or where, where the construction is going to be centered over the next couple of weeks. We put out regular uh, notices to the media and on our website just to kind of keep people up uh, as much as we can on, on the construction process. Yeah, thank you. Congressman Lipinski, it's LaGrange Road, as we all know it, is U.S. Federal Route 45, so a lot of the funding for these types of projects start in D.C. So can you give us a sense for, for LaGrange Road, but also broadly what's going on with transit issues in Washington these days? Well, it's, it's great to see LaGrange Road uh, coming along. I know it's something that's very, very important. As, as I come down here to Orland Park, Orland Hills, Tinley Park, it's all part of my, my district. LaGrange Road is a uh, very important uh, thoroughfare and coming down here to, to shop so it's, it's great to see I look forward to, to this project being uh, getting done here uh, but I'm hopeful that uh, we can do more from the federal level uh, we have uh, really been struggling to, to some extent to get a new highway funding bill highway and transit funding bill passed that is federal money that pays for comes to states for roads and for for public transit uh, this past year, we actually went, uh, walked up to a, another cliff here, and uh, it, just at the end of July, we passed a temporary short-term fix so that we can continue the funding for coming from the federal government for roads. That lasts until May. So at the beginning of next year, now it's a priority of mine. I sit on the House Transportation Committee. I'm the most senior member in, from the uh, Illinois delegation on that committee, and it's a priority of mine to get a new long-term road and transit funding bill passed. It is very critical that we do that. There's a lot of projects uh, like LaGrange Road and but many other projects that uh, need to get done. Congestion in the Chicago area is uh, one of the worst in, in the country, and, and we need to do more, not just for the roads, but also for, for public transportation. That's something that uh, is also critical. I know how important it is here. 
uh, with uh, Metra especially running uh, through Orland Park and that's something that uh, I'm focused on in getting more support from the federal government for public transportation. Yeah, we do need to try and add more trains, but Congressman Lipinski has been very good working with us on all the transportation issues. LaGrange has been the major focus for years, but we also are in the process, engineering process of 143rd uh, and 159th Street west of LaGrange Road. So those, are, those will be the next two big projects. Do you want to touch, to share those a little? Because those two, I think 159th is a federally marked route as well. Right. Uh, so that, right. that matter again, it all interconnects. And 143rd going west is as well. So it's... Uh, you know what, with 12 million square feet of, of uh, commercial in Orland Park, in addition to the almost 400,000 people in the service area, the communities around Orland, we have a lot of traffic and we need a lot of major road improvements. So LaGrange Road is a, is a huge project, very happy to have that underway, but we're just as happy looking forward to getting 143rd and 159th Street widened as well. Yeah. So Congressman, I'm sorry. Dan. I was just going to add with the, with the, the new I-355. 143rd and 159th with the uh, entrance and exit ramps uh, on 355. That's another reason we need to get those done soon. And, and it's great to see because we know, and thank you for all the time you, you've spent you know, working on these issues, but also kind of, you know, just being in the mix in, in, in Washington and sharing how it works because how much services on the Southwest line for Metra how robust the road network is has a lot to do with your work in, in, in D.C. So I, I guess the question would be, are you hopeful that we can find the long-term fix going into next year? Well, I think that uh, we just had Speaker Boehner say that's one of his priorities for next year is to do a, uh, uh, do a highway and transit bill. And I'm very happy to, to hear that. And so I hope that we can come together. Uh, that's one of the things that I've always... Uh, made a priority is to try to bring people together, uh, Democrats, Republicans, to get these you know, big projects done, to, to bring, the, bring the funding in. Uh, right now, I know you're talking about the uh, 143rd, 159th, the east-west routes now especially are uh, in this area, like you said, with 355 becoming more important, going to be, be busier. Uh, and so there's always more going on more growth and so it's about time that uh, we step up and, and do a long-term bill then we're going to have some uh, greater stability and we're going to know how much money is coming in so the plans can be made and these road projects can get done well, it's, it's great it's very much a quality of life issue and, uh, and so thank you for that so so mayor mclaughlin let's let, let's shift a little bit to uh, veterans types of issues so we've recently been named a uh, veterans commemorative community by the U.S. Department of Defense. Tell us more about Orland's vision for, for this issue. Well, really, the, the U.S. Department of Defense uh, created this program where communities can sign on and be uh, commemorative partners commemorating the Vietnam War, which is uh, coming up in 2015, 16, and 17. They've asked any communities that sign on to this partnership to provide at least two events a year for those three years commemorating the Vietnam War and the Vietnam War veterans. So we, we started right, right off the bat with uh, uh, creating a website, Mayors Vietnam Vets at OrlandPark.org. Uh, the reason I mention that is we're asking all Vietnam veterans, and not necessarily from just Orland Park, to sign on to that so we can keep them up on uh, events as we plan them. We already have scheduled the uh, Traveling Vietnam War uh, Memorial Wall will be out here uh, in our Civic Center Plaza, uh, but there's a lot of events we're, we're in the process of planning. We're looking for ideas from Vietnam veterans. Um, we hope to get some great speakers out here for some speakers programs. So over the next six months, we'll probably be fine-tuning some of those events and then announcing them, but there'll be at least two events each year, 2015, 16, and 17. So we're asking Vietnam veterans to sign on to our website. The, the, your name and uh, email address will only be used to update you on these Vietnam uh, commemorative events. And is, would that be a good way for veterans to contact your office to, for their ideas and they, share their ideas? They could uh, contact Mayor, Mayor's Vietnam Vets at OrlandPark.org and okay. uh, my assistant Lynn McQuarrie is uh, making sure they're all posted right and that we get the notices out to people. So at, at a minimum, even if they just want to call the office, right. they could call your office. Yep. Great. Yep. Congressman Lipinski, veterans issues have been very much a focus these days in the media. The, you see an awful lot of things with uh, young men and women coming back from, from the conflicts around the world. So give us a sense for what's going on in, in Washington around veterans issues. Well, first I want to uh, thank Mayor McLaughlin and the village for all that you do for, for veterans. I know it's a uh, real priority for you. Uh, I like coming out here for Memorial Day 
for the event that, uh, that, that you have. Uh, but uh, we can never repay veterans for all that they've done for us. Uh, but uh, we have to do all that we can. Right. And we, we saw, unfortunately, uh, very shameful uh, problems with the, the VA uh, that, that came to light early this year. Uh, I stepped forward and helped lead to institute a, uh, some reforms of the VA. We passed le legislation to uh, reform the VA. Um, and I had uh, a meeting with uh, Mark Kirk. We invited all veterans in the area to, to come and share their experiences with uh, the local uh, VA hospitals and to hear what some of the issues were so we, we, can, we can get these fixed. Uh, I really make it a, a priority to uh, do all I can for veterans. I have someone on my staff who uh, deals with veterans issues, uh, whether it's be veterans benefits, uh, problems they're having with the VA system, or medals that uh, they have, uh, a veteran has earned but has never received. We work at getting those uh, for that veteran. But you know, on top of that, we need to do more for those who are coming home today. Uh, there are so many veterans who you know, ha have seen you know, just horrible uh, actions and have had uh, some horrible injuries in uh, the wars that we have been involved in, especially over the last decade. And we need to do more. Uh, we have increased funding. And we're making sure that the, uh, you know, we are ready for those veterans when they come home. And for all veterans, we need to do more to get them to work to uh you know in this uh, tough economic times uh, veterans especially have a high unemployment rate and uh just helping them to get the uh, the work that they're very qualified for get them into those jobs and encourage employers to hire them no that that's great so thank you uh, personally my father relied on the VA out in the Hines for, for many years, so it's great to see that the VA Veterans Administration is, is going in a good direction. And thank you for what you're doing for, for all, the, all, all the veterans. So I appreciate that. Yeah, my father-in-law as well, and he, and he raved about it. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of good service being provided, but the, apparently there were some problems too. But yeah, it, it, it's one of those situations where uh, certainly that there are problems, but I, I also do hear some good things uh, from you know, more good than bad about what's going on at, at Heinz, so that's good to hear. But uh, anyone who doesn't receive the care that they, they should receive, um, that, that's just wrong. And it's a shame that uh, that happens to, uh, to any of our veterans. It, it seems that there's generally pretty good consensus around addressing the problem. Is that, is that what's happening in Washington, that folks are coming together to say we have to, we have to address these issues? Well, so far, uh, I think that we have made good steps forward saying that veterans who, uh, so they don't have long wait times, uh, they can go and uh, get, go out of the VA system to get coverage, uh, get, get uh, cared for by private doctors, uh, private hospitals, and that would be paid for by the VA. And I think that was one of the first steps. We also uh, instituted some reforms uh, of the VA. So hopefully those who uh, are not giving our veterans the, you know, the care that they deserve Hopefully, uh, we make sure that uh, they either leave the VA or I I in some way uh, we fix th those problems. So we'll see as time goes on. I'm not going to say it's all right. fixed, everything's going to be perfect. Uh, it's something that, that uh, I keep my, my eyes on to, to make sure we're doing the best we can. No, it's great to hear. And, and if, uh, if a veteran or the family of a veteran would like to contact you, you have an office here in the Village Hall, but they could reach out to any one of your district offices or, or give you a call, correct? Right. Any of my district offices, you either uh, stop by here uh, in uh, Orland Park Village Hall uh, or give a call. Uh, Orland Park is one of the three offices that, uh, that I have. And just contact me in any way, walk in, phone call, email and uh, we'll do the best we can to take care of you. No, that, that's great. I think it's great to have your office here in the Village Hall. It makes it easy for the, for the mm -hmm. services. Okay. So, uh, so Mayor McLaughlin, let, let's, uh, let's shift again to another topic. We in Orland Park have had a policy for a while that we try to prefer to do as much locally as we can. Right. And it's kind of important for economic development reasons, the health of the, uh, of the community. So as we in Oral Park think about what's next and how we do, you know, sort of shop local, shop Orland, give us a sense for what's coming next 
in Orland Park around business development and some of those policies to constantly improve right. the business and climate. Well, I'll tell you, we, we made a commitment as a village a long time ago to be a retail center. Yep. So we've got uh, 12, like I said, almost 12 million square feet of commercial property in Orland Park. One of the best things I always thought we could do to help our businesses is do all the road improvements so people can get in and out of town faster and easier, smoother, safer, uh, and higher volumes of traffic to come to our retailers. So I think all the road improvements we've been doing as a village over the years and, the, and where the state and fed, uh, federal government have been helping us with major projects like LaGrange, that ultimately helps the businesses. But in addition, we've, we've done a lot of promotional uh, uh, pro programs to help businesses uh, developing a downtown, which will help attract businesses, to, uh, people to the north side of town. Uh, probably one of our major next priorities should be, although it's never been off the radar, it's just uh, different reasons, different areas develop faster, but uh, the I-80 corridor, because we really need to start providing better higher end jobs for uh, people in the area, not just retail sales clerks. Uh, so the I-80 corridor has a lot of potential to develop office and research type development uh, facilities and that's I think where we'll bring in some uh, better jobs. Now we just, uh, the University of Chicago was just approved to do a medical center in our new downtown. That will provide uh, over a hundred good jobs. Uh, X-ray technicians and lab technicians, doctors, nurses, office managers. So those, you're taking a step up with jobs for the area with that type of a use. So, And, and it's a fairly big facility. I, I think, I, I don't know if most people can easily picture a hundred and plus thousand square feet. 120,000 square foot building plus a, a Double deck uh, garage, uh, and we we do have an awful lot of interest from other businesses and restaurants that want to relocate into that area or, or locate into the Orland Park area in that downtown. So we're helping the north side of town. Orland Square is obviously an economic engine right in the center of town, but then the I-80 corridor needs to be a priority very soon. Right. And fairly soon, I think Mariano's will start to uh, to get. Well, Mariano's is still north side of town, though. Right. But yeah, that's supposed to break ground, I believe, in early spring. 2015. Great. So, okay. Congressman Lipinski, there's there's um, a lot going on in, in, in D.C. Obviously, so could you share what's going on around the uh, around the idea of economic development or jobs or support for jobs uh, that you see going on in Washington? Well, I, th there should be more going on. Right. Unfortunately, there's not as much as uh, I would like to see. I had come out um, a couple of years ago with a five-point jobs plan mm -hmm. uh, to help promote jobs in this country, job creation in, in this country. A better economic climate. Uh, one of the things is strengthening manufacturing. I've been uh, very active in that. Uh, we passed in the House uh, at least a uh, bill that I have that would uh, every four years put together a public-private uh, committee that would recommend policies that are gonna, would help promote American manufacturing. I mean, we all get frustrated. It's hard to find anything made in the USA when you, you go into the store. We need to uh, really bring about a, uh, a rebirth and growth in, in manufacturing in this country. That's, that, that's one thing that I think is important that we can move forward on. Uh, we, we need to do more, and one thing we did do this year is do some more in terms of improving education and also workforce training. We did pass a bill uh, that takes the federal programs that help uh, with, with workforce training, so many people who have lost their jobs and need the training to find a new job. Uh, we took the federal programs, uh, we really streamlined those programs, so I think they will provide better service, better training for, for workers who need that for the, the jobs that are being created today and, and for tomorrow. I think that, that's very important to do. Uh, we need to invest in uh, innovation. Uh, we saw that the uh, the uh, Department of Defense has put a manu digital manufacturing center. They're putting it in in Chicago. What this is going to do is help local manufacturers, give them the access to the tools that they need, supercomputers, other tools they need to uh, improve uh, how they manufacture and improve supply chain management, uh, which will help um, local manufacturers to do a better job and to compete together in the uh, you know, in the world market that, uh, that they, they face today. So those are some of the things that uh, I've been promoting. A few things have gotten done. Uh, I think we see the economy improving a little bit, but it's much, much too little, much too slow. And I think there's more that we can do at the federal level to help to, uh, uh, help to create more jobs, help 
business owners, especially small business owners, to create those jobs that, uh, you know, that we need. There's a lot of anxiety about, out there about what the jobs of, are going to be of, of the future. And uh, so th that's something that I think is still my top priority and still the top priority for, for most Americans. Well, it's, it's great to hear. I think even the smallest of business nowadays has global competition through the internet. Everybody's competing with everybody. So the jobs training thing and the, and the assistance for the local businesses, that's, uh, that, that's great to hear. So uh, any, any other things that we, you, you want to share with the, with the viewers of uh, you know, InFocus in terms of uh, what's going on in DC, not outside these topics? Well, I, I think uh, one thing when we, you know, there's a lot, a lot of work left to be done. In, uh, unfortunately, uh, over the last few years, we have not seen enough cooperation, I think, in Washington. And American people see that and they're frustrated by it. I'm, I'm frustrated by that. And, and there really needs to be a, a change of, of thinking. And people really need to, to come together, work together to, to get things done. Uh, I think it's very important, and I've always believed it's important, that uh, I go to Washington, I do my work here to try to get things done, make things a little bit better in, in people's lives. I work with uh, state government, work with local governments, work with Mayor McLaughlin, uh, because we know what's most important to people is what happens to them, what they deal with in their everyday life, whether it's transportation, whether it's uh, local jobs, uh, whether it's uh, having access to uh, you know, where they want to go shopping locally. Uh, these are very important things. And the most important things to people are things that they have to deal with in their daily lives. And uh, I always say that the, uh, you know, the job of, of a mayor is in some ways more difficult than, the, uh, than, than my job because it's all local. Everyone knows who you are. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that uh, are, are expected for you to, to get done and to get right and make the community work. And uh, so I, I think it's, uh, it's my role to do all I can to help uh, local governments uh, like Orland Park, local mayors do the job uh, that uh, the people are asking them to do. That's great. Mayor McLaughlin, any closing uh, comments or thoughts? Uh, not only that uh, since Congressman Lipinski is here, he knows how I feel, but I think uh, it's important to keep pursuing the internet sales tax. I think uh, small town America based on main streets and small shopping areas around the, uh, the country are going to be hurt if uh, the unfair competition continues. So level the playing field. Le we, all, we, all we need to do is level the playing field. The, the businesses in Orland Park have invested in uh, brick and mortar buildings. They hire our people. They follow all our rules with setbacks and parking requirements and landscaping requirements. And then they, now their competition is online where people will always have the advantage of being able to order from their front room or their dining room table. Uh, so they'll always have that advantage, but there shouldn't also be the advantage of no sales tax because the communities need the sales tax, but the local businesses also can't afford to have that unfair competition and stay in business for uh, much longer. I think that makes sense. Just level, I think all everybody would like would be just level the playing field yep. and uh, let, let, let people uh, and, I, right. and, I, and I certainly agree with that. And I, I support that because we, we need to have the local communities be strong. And uh, with unfair competition, uh, that, that's just not going to happen. It's, it's going to uh, it's gonna hurt our communities. So it's, uh, it's certainly something I, I support. Great. I'm Jim Dodge, and thank you, Mayor McLaughlin. Thank you, Congressman Lipinski, and thank you for joining us on Orland Park In Focus.